Poor little guy. <laughs> Boy, do we have plans for you. Yeah, I'm at West Tech Performance. I'm Richard Holdner. Hey, that Richard Holdner guy tells us, ah, you gotta put ring gap in everything, anything you run, boost in. But why doesn't he show us how to add ring gap? Well, in this video, I'm gonna do exactly that. We have our 3800 V6 prepping for its eventual big bang. You know, when we turn the boost all the way up and find out what the weak part is on the stock bottom end, the stock block, stock crank, stock rods, and stock pistons. But in order to do that, one of the things that we have to do is add the necessary ring gap. So I have an L67 3800 supercharged V6 I've got from the wrecking yard. We're gonna take it all apart. I'm gonna find out first, what is the ring gap the way that it came from the yard? Does it already have enough? Who knows, we're gonna find out. Then if we don't have enough, I'm gonna use our fancy dancy little ring grinding tool and show you how we add ring gap to a big bang motor. Okay, we've got our 3800 and what I wanna do is we're gonna prep this thing for the big bang. So what I'll, all I wanna do really is I wanna resurface the deck so it'll work with, you know, we need the right RA finish so it will work with an MLS head gasket. And I'm gonna number the pistons, we'll take them out. While I have them out, I can put ring gap in them. And then we can have this resurfaced, have the block clean, and then we'll put it all back together with the original stuff, bearings and all that. I've got a custom cam for it. Uh oh, we looked at the cam bearing. We'll put it all back together. I got ported heads for it, custom cam. I got a ported intake and I'll have a custom elbow on it. So right now I'm gonna take these pieces off. We'll strip this thing down, take the pistons out, put ring gap in it, have the block machine, put it back together, and hopefully, fingers crossed, Big Bang 3800. How much do you think it'll make, guys? Okay, we're gonna flip this thing over. Take the rods out, take the pistons out. Oh, oh. A little bit of debris in there. Looks like silicone. I'll be okay. The cylinders look like they're in pretty good shape. Check and make sure that there are any hot rods in here. Get it, hot rods. So before removing the rods and the pistons, I just made sure to label them so we know which one, you know, they go back in. Got them all labeled, so I'll start pulling them off. Full race. Need some ring gap. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we wanna put ring gap in this and our prep to do a big bang on it. So before I send it over to the machine shop to have a deck surface, I'll take the rings off of this piston and we'll put it in and find out how much ring gap we have stock and then how far we have to modify it. Good idea, rule of thumb, six and a half thousandths per inch of bore. So we'll calculate that out, we'll measure the bore and see how much we have to add I've got a little uh, ring tool over here, a filing tool from the guys at Total Seal. I'll show you that in just a second. But let's pop these off. We'll put them in and see where we are to start and then how much we need to add. Pop our, pop our top ring off first. We'll try that one. Install it in there. That is even the number two piston going in the number two hole. Quite honestly, in a lot of the, these big bang motors, I don't even care which one they go in because I mean, we're trying to break it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But let's find out how much gap we've got to start out with and then how much we need to adjust. Okay, we've got a ring down the bore. What I did, we use the piston basically, push it down just to the depth of the second ring. Nice for a make, makes for a nice uh, ring squaring tool. So this is our ring gap right here. What do you guys think? Take a guess. That's the factory ring gap right there, or at least the factory gap as we know it from this motor that came out of the wrecking yard. This is an L67, this is a series two, factory supercharged one. So let's go ahead and take a look. What do you guys think? 5,000, 10, 15, 20, 25? How much do you think it is? Let me know in the comments. 
but I'm gonna guess that's like a, I don't know, 21, I'm gonna say. So we'll try that here. So that does fit. What size is that? That one is a little scratched up. Where is it? There we go. There's that size. Let's look at that size. Oh, no, I was wrong. It's not 21. It is a 22. So that's pretty close. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit more gap out of that. This is a basically a 3.8 inch bore, so I'm gonna add a little bit more than that, but that's you know kind of on the safe side for a 3.8 inch bore maybe that's why we can run boost on a lot of these but i'd like to see it up a little bit higher than that so let's go over to our super duper ring tool and then i'll show you how to add even more gap okay i've got a ring set up it's the grinder adjustment knob this is our setup right here and right here we tighten our ring down this is our dial indicator so what we have to do, and I'm going to not be able to, well, I can kind of show you. So we want to bring our ring into place, and then... I normally don't do this with one hand. Right now, I'm taking about four thousandths out of it, and this is a 3.8 inch bore. That wants to put us somewhere around 25 to 26 thousandths for ring gap. So let's put it back in. We'll measure it and see where we are. Okay, finished with our ring machine. Right, our little gauge again. Right now, we've got a fairly snug 26. That's probably enough for what we're doing. So now we have to do is the same thing to all the other rings for all the other bores, and away we go. In the case of the second ring, this thing already has way more gap than it needs. That's at around 28 or 29, so we don't need to do anything to the second ring. We'll check all of them and make sure, but that would be nice to make our ring job a lot easier. So we figured out now that we don't have to do the second ring because it's already oversized anyway, so I'm just doing the first ring, so I'll take it through a quick procedure. Because once you get it going with this machine, you just know you know to set it at, hey, let's take off four or five to six thousandths on each one of them. You pop the first ring off, put it in there, measure it, and you're, away you go. So let's run through it right now. So we'll grab a piston here. Take the top ring off. Set it in our bore. Take our leveling piece here. there all these seem to be fairly consistent yeah they all seem to be fairly consistent at 22 thousandths so put it in our machine over here Got to put it back on the piston and away we go. Okay, get all the rings done. This thing is ready. The only thing I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a bath, clean them up, and we're ready to go back in. As soon as we get our block back from the machine shop, on the deck surface, got to get an MLS head gasket. I already have the ARP studs for it. I got the ported heads, got a custom cam. 
I do need to get a set of 1-9 rockers from the guys at ZZP. That's going to work with the camshaft that we have. And then I just have to do a little porting on the lower intake manifold, and hey, away we go.